NBC Sports Bay Area 49ers insider Matt Mayoko here on the Rich Eisen Show. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, Rich. Thanks for having me on your show. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on uh, because, uh, boy, boy, am I hearing it from Niner fans all over the place that I'm not plugged in. I don't, I'm not there every day. I don't know what I'm talking about uh, from my seat here. So I figured, you know what? Let me get somebody who has got an absolutely unbesmirchable resume on this front. And you are that, Matt. <laughs> You are you that, Matt. Oh, that person wasn't available, so you called me in. No, 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 I, because I, I think I know some things. You know, I've been around the block a few times of this National Football League, but I want to just ask you where the depth chart in your estimation for the 49ers quarterback front now stands one preseason week into 2023. Well, the, the one thing that is no questions asked, 100 percent Brock Purdy is number one Mm -hmm. that's based on the way he played last season Uh, eight games where he played some really good football the 49ers did not lose including two playoff games so you know that gives him the edge and and at the end of the season all of his teammates were fully on board with Brock Purdy so Brock Purdy when he was cleared for the first day of training camp that guaranteed it right there that he would be the starter as long as there were no setbacks with the elbow he'd be the starter week one when the 49ers go play the pittsburgh steelers and then i would say for most of training camp you know the offseason training camp the number two has been kind of a too close to call race uh with uh, trey lance whom the 49ers selected with the number three overall pick in 2021 traded up to get him obviously and then Sam Darnold, who was also a number three overall pick. And, I, I, you know, based on just the eye test and how things looked on Sunday when the 49ers played the Las Vegas Raiders, I, I don't think it's a huge stretch to say that Sam Darnold is probably now the, the favorite to be the, the number two. That, you know, Trey Lance just, I, I think when you look at those two quarterbacks, both, you know, very talented guys. You know, there's one major difference, and the difference being that Sam Darnold has 55 NFL regular yeah. season starts. And granted, it's a mixed bag, and probably, you know, is bad experience good experience? Well, um, I think when you just watched him perform on Sunday, you, you could see the experience more than with Trey Lance, who only has four NFL starts. And, and one of those starts, he got injured early in the first quarter, and he was out for the for the season. That was last year when he started the season as the as the 49ers number one, and then Jimmy Garoppolo came in, and then later Brock Purdy. So I think the the, the number one thing just working against Trey Lance is he's 23 years old, and he simply has not played a lot of football since his final high school season at Marshall High in Minnesota. Because remember. He was only a one-year starter at North Dakota State, mm-hmm. so he just, you know, he, he, yesterday was rough. You know, he he held the ball too long. Um, you know, he started off really slow, but he needs that experience because it's he, he's trying to make up for a lot of lost ground. Well, I mean, and to the benefit for him as well as you know the 49ers is the first half they had a lot of possessions as opposed to the second half, the third quarter. You know, a a turnover occurred after Donald's first set of snaps in the in the second half. But you could definitely just see the difference between Donald's comfort level and his command and his um, just general uh, abilities on a football field compared to Lance, which definitely looked shaky. It looked uh, a little bit uh tenuous and tentative he was on his back quite a bit as well I I understand that and you look at Darnold you got to sit here and think you know as you pointed out in his 55 starts you know mixed bag you know part of that mixed bag was Adam Gase in New York after the coach that drafted him got fired and then he goes to Matt Rule who then you know um gets fired right and Mm -hmm. you know at injuries and whatnot so he's got to be sitting there, you know, in a Kyle Shanahan world going, ah, oh, okay, so the sun can shine in the National Football League. And I, I just yeah. get the sense that just watching him carry himself, just even for a, a half or quarter yesterday, I got that sense watching that. And that's going to be yeah. tough for Lance to overcome, I feel, the, Matt. 
Yeah, there's there's no question. You know, Rich, I, I created a little bit of an uproar here in the Bay Area in the off season when I made the comments that uh, Sam Darnold is about as you know, uh, you know, might be about the most talented thrower of the football the 49ers have ever had, and uh, you know, people like kind of read that like, hold it, you're saying he's the best quarterback? Mm. It's like, no, he physically. He can throw the football, and he's shown that. But you know, it, it, the physical ability—you um, know—he's not lacking for that. But it's the other things of why he hasn't been successful. And you—you you mentioned some of them, and I would even go—you know—the coaching has been one of them. The lack of stability wherever he's been, and then also, you know, not a great supporting cast anywhere he's been. So, a lot of it falls on him. Um, you know, he hasn't played well, but he really hasn't had a, an opportunity to play well either. And so coming to Kyle Shanahan system where, you know, this staff is is in place, there's there's stability here. Um, it's a different offensive system. It's a very friendly quarterback system. It's also a, a very friendly for the quarterbacks because – all he has to do is look around and see, oh, there's George Kittle. There's Christian McCaffrey behind me. There's uh, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk on the outside. Um, the Kyle Juszczyk. I mean, they have tremendous offensive weapons. And so, you know, the quarterback doesn't have to be a world beater where, hey, you know, guys jump aboard. I'm going to carry it to victory. He has to be a point guard. He has to be a facilitator. And so I think that's where, uh, Sam Darnold comes in where there's not the pressure of the world on the quarterback here because there are so many other uh, factors working to the advantage of the quarterback. He just has to see the field in the way that Kyle Shanahan wants him to see the field, make the right decisions, be decisive, get rid of the football, be accurate, be on time. And that's that was an area in the game yesterday where, where Trey Lance struggled and Sam Darnold looked pretty good. A very, you know, very brief playing time for Sam Darnold. But, you know, it, you could see uh, the, the physical talent and you could just see that um, he had a, a calm about him that, that maybe Jets fans and, and Panthers fans didn't see nearly as often as they would have liked. Well, I'm rooting for all of them, to be quite honest with you, you know. Um, and <laughs> Purdy's going to win this thing. Um, so the question is... He already is, has won it. Right? He's won he it. He already has won it. It's so, so then I guess here, here are some follow-up questions. Matt Miyoko of NBC Sports Bay Area here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, how, how is it looking in practice with all three of them, what are you seeing from these guys? Well, ups and downs. I, I think with Purdy, you know, he didn't play at all in the off season. In fact, I mean, it was a surprise to some people that he was as far along when training camp started. So, you know, the, the last practice against the Raiders, he, the Raiders got their hands on a lot of footballs. Uh, but the encouraging thing for him is that. Uh, he did make some throws down the field, 20, 25 yards outside the numbers. So th- there just doesn't seem to be any wavering about where he is mm-hmm. and just kind of going through the process and, and knocking the rust off and getting the timing back with his receivers. Uh, it just doesn't seem like there's much concern at all about where he is. Uh, it, it, you know, For all three guys, it hasn't always been pretty on the practice field. It, it rarely is during training camp. Um, but I would say that, you know, if you're, if you're just doing the eyeball test and you're out there just watching each of these guys throw the football around, I mean, Sam Darnold is a guy that, that looks, you know, he, he looks physically uh, like an NFL quarterback should. But what Brock Purdy has is, A, the success in the system, uh, the confidence of the coaching staff and the players around him. And then these just kind of unique skills that you can't measure. I mean, it's the reason he he was the final pick in the the 2022 draft because you watch him throw at the combine, you watch him do all these other things, and it's not exactly eye popping. But then when you just see him under pressure, the poise, uh, the decision making, uh, the accuracy. So he he brings just so many variables to the equation. And, you know, the, the a number one thing, the one thing you can measure if you're the 49ers is the number of victories when he was out there on the field. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's his job. And then I would say, you know, for most of training camp, been three weeks now, uh, Darnold and, and Trey Lance have had their days when uh, they look good, they look not so good. Um, the 
but I'd say by and large, the 49ers have to be very happy with their their quarterback situation. They were, they were burned last year. Oh yeah, uh, you know they had three quarterbacks that they really liked to go into the season with Trey Lance as a starter. They knew there would be some rough patches, so they thought that he would emerge at the end of the season a much better player than at the beginning of the season. Well, he never got that opportunity because of the injury. And then, of course, Jimmy Garoppolo comes in. He kind of steadies the ship a little bit, and they start winning some football games. And then Brock Purdy, when he stepped in there, of course, Christian McCaffrey was also with the team at that time, but that offense really took off. So, so they feel good about their quarterback situation and yeah. the competition for the number two. So the question I have then is, is Lance going to get some time with the ones in a game in the preseason? I mean, Denver's coming in, and uh, this is the final rubber-meets-the-road preseason game. Um, do we see Purdy at all? Um, I know I'm asking multiple questions here, but it is yeah. how, how is this all going to work in a second preseason game? Because if Lance needs time and he needs reps and the ones might need some time, do you give it, do you give it to Lance in a preseason game? Does Purdy go a little bit? Because you, you don't really want to throw him against Mike Tomlin and the Steelers, right? In week one, having not played since – the NFC Championship game, right? Uh, so I, I'll know, just throw that I, out to you here. What do you think? I, yeah, I think that you know the bigger priority is just make sure everybody reaches the starting line healthy. And I, I don't know that they believe that Brock Purdy needs that playing time. I mean, look at it this way. I mean, he, he's been practicing two days on one day off. And I think he, he might go start going every day now, maybe this week. Uh, but he already has probably twice the number of practice snaps in this training camp than he did all of last year when he was the number three behind uh, Trey Lance in Meet Sudfeld. I mean, mm-hmm. he just got scrapped on the practice field. And then later, of course, Jimmy Garoppolo uh, took the pay cut and remained with the team. But every time that Brock Purdy has been on the field in training camp, it's been with the number ones. And on those practices where he's not out there practicing, then it's been Sam Darnold and Trey Lance splitting splitting reps with those number one offensive line and receivers. So I don't know exactly what how they plan to, to work this. Uh, I don't know if they want uh, Brock Purdy to, to be subjected to any unfriendly defensive linemen here before the start of the regular season. What is today? Today is August 14th. Yes, sir. The season starts September 10th. So they very well might just say, hey, let's give this guy one more month of of work or three weeks, whatever it is, to, to work and, and get the arm strength up and get his velocity uh, up to where it was. Uh, and then, you know, turn him loose for the first week of the regular season. So I, I really don't know um, what they plan to do. But, Richard, wouldn't it surprise me at all if the next time you see him, Brock Purdy, that is, lined up against team – in a different color uniform, it is that week one game at Pittsburgh. So a few, uh, I've got a, a what if, and then two more quick hitters for you before I send you on to your Monday, Matt Miyoko. The sure. what if, if you know, you know how NFL teams are. They read tea leaves. They hear that they they hear people talking, and and if it's gonna be Purdy and then Darnold, um, and I know the Niners um, are, are are proof positive that you need more than three quarterbacks <laughs> to win a Super Bowl sometimes. <laughs> Are our teams knocking on John Lynch's door for Lance potentially to get to get him in a system for an entire 2023 year and and look towards the future? Is that is that happening? And would the Niners be interested in that by the end of the summer? Uh, to, to my knowledge, that hasn't happened yet. And uh, you know, will it happen? I don't know. I think he has to put better stuff on film than he did on Sunday for any team. Uh, to be making those phone calls. I'm sure there were a lot of teams back in 2021 that really liked Trey Lance and had him rated, you know, whatever, wherever it was, somewhere in the first round. Oh, yeah. And maybe some of those teams still need a quarterback. So I, I guess the, the big question is, if Sam Darnold wins the number two job, you know, do you keep – well, there's there's two factors here. Will a team reach out to the 49ers to get Trey Lance because he would then be the number three guy and a guy who'd be suited up on game days but only available to play if there are two injuries uh, to the other two quarterbacks? Then for the 49ers, you know, what, what's the price then? 
you know, what, what's, do you part ways with him? I mean, I guess it all depends on what a team's willing to offer um, for Trey Lance. But uh, I would say if you're the 49ers and some team comes calling about your number three quarterback, if that's the way it shakes out, they have to listen and they have to like figure out, okay, what is it we're, we're willing to, um, to get in return for him? Uh, you know, the thing about Trey Lance is, honestly, I've never heard a bad word about him inside the organization. Not people. about his work ethic, good not people. about uh, right. his football smarts, not about anything. Mm-hmm. And so it's not like the 49ers have soured on Trey Lance. It's just that they don't know. They have no idea how he's going to perform or how he would perform with an extended run at quarterback. And frankly, no, we may never find out <laughs> because if Brock Purdy – stays healthy, if he plays up to what he played at last year, n- neither Sam Darnold nor Trey Lance is going to get on the field. Uh, here are my quick hitters for you, Matt Miyoko. Nick Bosa, where do things stand on that? How is it playing uh, out? Still, still in a contract impasse. 49ers are confident that they can get him in in the next week or 10 days. Okay. And so what's the holdup here? He's asking for too much, or we're 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 in well, the T crossing, yeah, I dotting portion of this. What do you got? What do you think? My guess would be that what what Nick Bosa's side wants would be to make him the highest paid non quarterback in the NFL, whereas the Forty ers might push back a little bit on that, or maybe a lot on that, and say, well, the Aaron Donald contract is kind of apples and oranges, so. You know, maybe the T.J. Watt contract at $28 million a year is more in line. You know, a bump up from that is more in line than the $31.6 million that Aaron Donald is making because that was kind of tacked on for a couple of years. Uh, you're talking Aaron Donald, three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Rams are just coming off a Super Bowl win as well. So, uh, to me, that would kind of be uh, the hold up there. Just which comp are you using? Are you using... Uh, T.J. Watt or using Aaron Donald. And it's interesting that the Niners would have the ability to pay Bosa, you know, um, because they're going to be starting a kid with three more years left on a seventh round final pick of the draft contract, right? And I'm sure Bosa's pushing the same thing, saying, hey, you pay my guy. You're like, you're you're starting somebody who's got the final pick of the draft contract for three more years. Yeah. You know, where the 49ers have an advantage right now is that they're basically not paying their quarterback. Right. Uh, you know, and they, they have him on this really, you know, relatively speaking, cheap deal, not only for this season, but the for next. next season as well. Right. And then only after three years can they, are the sides that even allowed to renegotiate a contract. So, Whereas every other top team in the NFL is paying their quarterback, what, $40 million plus per year, the 49ers don't have anything. So that allows them you know, to pay Nick Bosa. It allows them to pay George Kittle and Fred Warner and Trent Williams and allows them to go out in free agency and get uh, Javon Hargrave. So it allows them to really build out the rest of that roster like they've done because the quarterback comes so cheaply. In the two minutes I have left, what's your reporting on Phillip Rivers? Would that have happened? If if somehow the Eagles had gotten had, had, had the Niners gotten past the Eagles last that year, that was Super Bowl? the plan. Yeah, that was the plan. That uh, Philip Rivers, if if the 49ers had somehow gotten past the Eagles after Brock Purdy, you know, sustained that, that torn elbow ligament, that the plan was to to get Philip Rivers up to speed rather quickly, and that he would have been the the starting quarterback in the Super Bowl hmm. over. Josh Johnson, you know, Josh Johnson, remember, they, they signed him off the Broncos practice squad after the Garoppolo injury. And so, yeah, it would have been uh, it would have been pretty remarkable. Well, obviously, it would have been remarkable for the 49ers to, to defeat the Eagles without a quarterback. But, uh, yep, it would have been uh, quite a quite a scene to, to see them just wheel out uh, uh, Phillip Rivers. And and uh, his, his debut with the 49ers would have been, uh, the most important game of his life. Oh, 
But it's not like, you know, they had Phillip on speed dial for the first time at halftime when they knew that Purdy was significantly injured, right? I mean, so no. Phillip must have been on, on the hook for a while, and I think that's what Kyle Shanahan said. Let's just say Purdy had not gotten hurt. Niners had gotten through, like Debo Samuel keeps saying they would have. And so would they have would would Philip have been on the on the team, do you think? With Jimmy G convalescing? Do you think? I I don't know because at that point I think they were still holding out hope or expecting right. that it, with another two weeks Garoppolo would have been the number two. You know, but no one was gonna unseat Purdy. Uh but but we're talking I think right. when the initial conversations with Philip Rivers happened, it was, hey, you know, basically uh what kind of shape are you in? Because if something else disastrous happens, we want you. And it, it certainly sounds like Philip Rivers was was open to that and, and started doing a little bit of work just in case. And that that just in case would have happened if um, if the 49ers had again somehow. Kind of tough to uh, to win a football game in the NFC Championship game, no less, when you have a quarterback who cannot throw a football. But yes. let's just say that Josh Johnson had remained healthy. And, and the 49ers had somehow scrapped together that victory, then uh, Philip Rivers would have been wearing the 49ers colors in the Super Bowl. Matt, thanks for the time. Look for more of my calls as the season progresses. I have a feeling the Niners are going to be a factor. That's just, again, my spidey they, sense. They are. They're, yeah. uh, maybe it's just the local bias, but I always think that <laughs> yes. the 49ers are the most fascinating team in football and and this year it seems to be that way again well they certainly have a passionate fan base that likes to share that you don't know what you're talking about so thanks for the call matt greatly appreciate it you take care (laughs) thanks red yeah it's matt mayoko of nbc sports bay area could you imagine philip rivers going from coaching high school football in alabama retired for two years starts in the super bowl if somehow some way in any way shape or form the niners had gotten some comeback great what if what an if. I mean, I don't even know if that you can beat. That's the, if is doing a heavy lift. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.